Hello everybody, it's Scott Omato back for another Batania video. In this one we're going to do auto crafting of all the runes using refined storage, which is an easy way to do it. Probably the easiest way. Uh, so here in our refined storage system, we've got the very simple basic one and then we have a setup for the runic altar here. And let me go over each component here to let you know what we have. So we have a controller here i'm using the creative but if you could have the regular controller and hook it up to power i then have a crafting grid with all the items in the system that i can do auto crafting with and i have the um, pattern grid which in the 1.12.2 version of refined storage is now just a single block and then this checkbox will switch between regular auto crafting creating the patterns or creating patterns for the machines, the processing patterns. Okay, and that's what we'll be using to create the runes. Uh, then I do have a disk drive that has all the Batania items in it and pretty much only the Batania items. Then I have a crafting monitor to monitor the crafting progression as it goes and an interface which uh, in 1.12.2 will expose all items. Now, all of my other main items, which is basically every item in the game, is coming from a transmutation table from Project E, which can now be used for storage in the system, uh, being connected as external storage. So all of these items are EMC equivalents, they're virtual equivalents uh, of all the items in the game, which is cool. So you could just simply hook that up with a cable there in external storage, and then I just have cables going over to here to two sets of crafters that have the runes in them. So uh, the patterns for the runes. So I'll have just the first level runes in here. Uh, first and second level runes. There's eight of them, eight slots. And then the other eight, which is the third level runes, basically the seven deadly sins and the rune of mana uh, are in this guy. And... The way that I'm doing the auto crafting is with the mechanical user from Extra Utilities, one underneath that you set to activate block with item and a random slot and all that's fine. And I'm leaving it always on. And it has a uh, connection to the um, refined storage system here, a, a cable going into it which is connected to the crafters on both sides. So there's cables on both sides. And it, they just feed the items for the recipe. And then the activate block with item clicks it here into the runic altar. So it's a real simple way of doing it. Then there's this other mechanical user that is set to use item on block. And then I do make sure and put the upper left hand slot there because it has the wand of the forest in bind mode to complete the operation with the uh, click of the wand. And I set that one to redstone on and have a lever here to enable and disable that. So it only clicks when it's needed, uh, when I'm doing auto crafting. Otherwise, I just have a chest that has an importer going into the refined storage system. So it's just looped through there. This will pull the items out of the chest back into the system to complete the crafting process. And then I have a floating hopper hawk uh, that is pulling items and it's set to only pick up items not in frames. Okay, so the reason we're doing that is because we have living rock here in an item frame because living rock kind of floats above the interface and it can be pulled picked up by the hopper hawk. So you don't want that to happen. You want to um, be sure and filter it from the system so basically i'm blacklisting living rock and picking up everything else now you do need to use a regular hopper hawk because things can fly in crazy directions and i do want to say that in your final setup you're going to want to go another level down with these cables and then cover them with whatever your ground material is and then that way some of the runes and stuff won't fly into crazy places and and have trouble being picked up so you want it you know, as clear as possible on how to uh, be accessible from the Hopper Hawk. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, this one, again, has the one that does the clicking on the final operation. And this mechanical user 
pulls in the items, and that's basically all there is to it. Now, I also have uh, a Everlasting Guilty Mana Pool here, just for demonstration purposes, and a Gaia Mana Spreader, uh, just for demonstration purposes. You'll obviously choose what levels of spreader you can afford at the time, and uh, but with the Gaia one, it's really, really fast. So let's look at how to set up the patterns here. Uh, it's a very simple process. I basically just do them in the order they are in JEI. So you want to call up the recipe in JEI by pressing R, then hold your shift and choose the plus button that says move items, move items into the pattern grid there. Now notice the runic altar is in the pattern. That is something you want to correct. And the reason is, is because that's the machine that's doing the processing, but you don't want that in your final pattern so shift click that out will get rid of it and then we do want to add a living rock because that's the last item of the crafting so you do want to add it to your recipe and so that'll produce two of the runes of water and we just click this arrow here to make the pattern and there's our first pattern so they're all the same process through all the levels of runes Obviously, except you're going to use actual runes themselves in the crafting as you get higher up. So hold your shift, click the move items, shift click that runic altar out of there, put yourself a living rock. It doesn't consume the living rock, so you only need one in your inventory, and then click your pattern and you have it. And same thing with the highest level patterns, just click it in, click that out, put in your living rock make your pattern, and you're good to go. Now, something important to mention about this, when you create these patterns, you want blocking to be selected, okay? Blocking can be selected and unselected. You want blocking to be selected because what that does is it stops any other crafting process that's involving the same machine, in this case, the runic altar, you can only do one crafting process at a time when blocking is on. And that prevents you from, say you're making multiple copies of runes, that uh, stops it from filling in extra ingredients into the runic altar through the mechanical user. Or if you're having to produce multiple runes for a, a higher level recipe, then it'll only allow you to produce one of those runes at a time. So... That keeps everything flowing as it needs to be for you to produce all the levels of the runes. So absolutely be sure while you're creating your recipe to have blocking enabled. Very, very important. All right, so I've obviously gone through and produced all of them here in both of these crafters. So we're good to go. Let's do a little bit of crafting here. So um, I've got a couple of runes on me here that I pulled out of the system, but let's, for example, produce a rune of air. So I already have two of them in here and it's a couple in my inventory. And you can see that when you can craft something, you can show what can only be crafted by clicking the second button here, display only craftables. And then that'll show you what you're missing in the system. You can search by that to filter them. So that's showing me all the runes that I need to craft into the system. But let's go ahead and do air. So I just click on it and then it will tell me how many I want to do. I'm just going to do one. I'll start it and it will show me all the ingredients which are available in the system. Uh, again, these are coming from the EMC system here. And then the Batania stuff is coming from the disk drive. Uh, and then we do have the living rock. So if I start that, it sends it over through the mechanical user there. You can see the items filtering out and going into the runic altar. And then they'll go above. The mana flows into it. The wand clicks on it. It gets created and pulled into the system by the hopper hawk into this chest and then is imported into the system and the crafting completes. So now we do have a rune two runes of air in the system, all right? And that's a complete auto craft for that basic level rune. Now let's look at doing a second level rune like the rune of summer. Uh, we do have one in the system. Let me see what we'll need for that. We need an earth and we need air. So let's pull out the air that we've already crafted. 
so that we'll make them again. And then earth, pull that, those out. All right, so now we'll need to craft those two. So for summer, let's go ahead and click that one in. Start, start, and it's going to do the uh, two first level runes that it needs to do. It'll do those first. There we go. That's the first one. Get pulled into the system. Okay, now it's going to do the second level one or the, the second one that it needs. There you go. And finally, it'll do the rune that we've requested to do. So it'll do multi-level processes, which is super nice. I believe this one was summer. You can see that stuff falls in weird places, but it can be picked up. So that will complete the crafting process. And we should now have runes of summer, a, a rune of summer in the system. Excellent. So let's go ahead and produce, let's say, the Rune of Greed. Pull those out and see what we'll need for that. Uh, we need the Rune of Water and the Rune of Spring. So I'm going to pull those out of the system. Water and Spring. Because again, I, I want to demonstrate the multi-level process that it, it can do all the levels that are needed, which is really cool. So we decided we were going to do Greed. Let me click that, click here. It shows me that I need some items in the system to craft. It'll say what, which ones that need to be crafted. I can start it. It'll show the process that it's going through here. See, it says machine in use, which means that it's locked at those lower levels because now it's producing water. All right, it's producing the rune of water there. That just got imported into the system. Then it'll do the next level one. I, am, I don't think we set it up to do two levels of the next one. Uh, so it should do it directly. Let's be sure all our stuff gets pulled in. All right, now it's finally going to do uh, the Rune of Greed, I believe was the one we were doing. And once it completes, it'll pull that into the system. There we go. And that should complete the process. And so in our system here, we should have Rune of Greed. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So it's pretty flawless system. Um, even if you need to pull stuff from other crafting operations, you can certainly do that. So you can mix it up as you needed. And this is probably the cleanest, simplest way to do that. Just be aware that if you're close to the item when it ejects it, if you have this near you, you could possibly pick up the item. And if you do, you could either just put it back directly into the system or drop it into this chest where it'll be imported in. And then that way the crafting monitor will pick up the change and let the uh, crafting operation finish. But normally you would just branch out these cables as needed to put it in a a location that you desire. But that's going to be it for this video. I hope you learned something from that. It is really a cool way to auto craft and it makes it so much easier. I know this is the non purest way of doing it, but it's very, very clean and simple. And you can just produce all the runes you need um, for your Botania playthrough. So, anyway, this is Scott Omato. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day. Bye bye.